In 2005, after license disputes with BitKeeper, Linus Torvalds, creator of Linux, you may have heard of it, sort of runs the web, not a big deal, decides to write his own version control. He wrote Git in five days. And within a couple years, it became a widely used version control. And now, today, it is the de facto standard for all developers. To be clear, when I say Git, I don't mean an insult from across the pond. And I don't mean GitHub. GitLab, Stash, or any of the others. All of those companies use Git. They are not Git. Git allows you to track code changes over time by author with a set of commands to search, manipulate, and revert history. In simple term, Git creates a commit. A commit is just a set of changes tied to an author, time of day, and other information. As many commits as you want can be added to the graph. At any commit, you can branch off and create new commits on the new line. Any of these branches can be merged into any other branch, including the main line. Commits can be squashed into one commit, and commit messages can be edited. Also, Git commits can be reverted, just in case they don't want terrible code. Git is a very complicated piece of software, but the interface and operations are very simple. And in this course, we're going to be going over installing and configuring Git, porcelain and plumbing commands, inspecting Git history, branching, merging, and rebasing, undoing changes, and remote repos and GitHub. I hope you enjoy this course, and in about another month or two, I will be releasing part two, which will go over all the advanced features, advanced techniques with merges and rebases and conflicts, and of course, just really diving into some of the more complex parts of Git. But in this course, you should be able to get everything you need to become quite proficient in the real world, including understanding how Git works. The name is the Gitagen.